Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to, we're going to be showing indium. This is an indium chip. Now, right here, it's a very small chip that weighs about half a gram. Maybe actually, probably even less than that. It's a very, very small chip of indium. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if it attracts or repels a magnet. Now, here's a neodymium magnet. No visible attraction. Now, obviously, this won't do anything. So, and I knew this would happen. So, I'm gonna bring in a more sensitive setup here. The water bath. So, this is a very, very sensitive. Now, let's see. Get anything here? No diamagnetism, or no ferromagnetism, or paramagnetism. Now, I'm gonna get. A larger neodymium magnet. This thing might do something. But surprisingly, the answer is no. I'm not getting an visible re uh, getting a visible reaction. Look at that. And maybe it repels or it attracts. Does it do anything? It almost seems to do both. Let me push that over there. Towards moving away. No attraction. And it doesn't... Yeah, maybe it actually repels it. Yeah, actually there's nothing that... D it actually just doesn't do anything. So yeah, indium versus a magnet. Surprisingly, absolutely nothing. Now, as a test, I'm going to be getting something that is ferromagnetic, meaning it is strongly attracted to a magnet. And get rid of this indium chip. Stick that little clip in there. Now watch this. I stick this into the styrofoam. So show that this set setup really is sensitive. Put the neodymium magnet over here. As you can see, the attraction is tremendous. See, it just pulls the styrofoam right out of the water. Shoot, wrong way. Actually, you know what? Like that? I could be a cold trick. Styrofoam being magnetic. But yeah, that's steel or iron, and it's highly ferromagnetic. And steel is ferromagnetic. And styrofoam should be diamagnetic, but it doesn't seem like it. Because a neodymium magnet, this is just not quite a strong enough magnet to actually show any reaction. So, to most people's surprise, this thing obviously does nothing. And, yeah. Wow. Where's the other piece of the magnet? As you can see, it just broke. Well, that was already broken. That's why one side looked different than the other. Because the, one of them, one, the little small piece over here was already broken off, and that had been dipped in acid. I tried to make ferrofluid, like any other way. I, I didn't think it was going to work, because I didn't expect acid to dissolve metal and make ferrofluid, but I just wanted to see if it would work. And all it did was eat the coating. So, that was a fail. But, hey. It made the no ferrofluid. Now. Look at that from a great distance. Is this a tremendous distance here? All the way over here, it's visibly attracted. And can I visibly? Yeah, I can repel it, attract it. Look at that. That's ridiculous. That is another magnet. That's another neodymium magnet. And this is so cool how you can just do this from this far away. So peace out. The indium does nothing to a magnet. I mean, you might, if you have a more sensitive setup with a sphere magnet, it might be possible you get some reaction. And you know, for that, for the matter of just to see, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to get a couple of indium chips. I have roughly 60, give or take a couple. And I'm going to put a couple on the plate. And indium doesn't rust, luckily. I figured that out the hard way. But luckily, it didn't rust. Now, let's see if I get any reaction with more indium. Any eddy currents? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, indium does nothing to a magnet. So, I mean, it might be slightly diamagnetic, but at the point of basic of this strong magnet doing basically nothing, there's th if it's diamagnetic, it's very lowly diamagnetic. And put the magnet 
back in. So peace out, guys.